how to mix watercolours. In this video we're going to look at three colours which as a beginner I suggest you avoid using. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here my name is Michelle and on this channel you can learn more about painting and drawing, in particular watercolour but other media too. Also business, social media and motivation for artists so please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell notification you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So I want to start this video by saying that there are no good or bad colours and in my book no colours are banned. But there are several colours that I think that as a beginner you're going to find it difficult to use effectively. Now before anyone says black and white aren't colours I will be speaking about those in this video and yes I'm aware that they aren't actually colours but um, it's just the easiest way of explaining it to you. So I'm going to talk about three colours and you're going to be asking yourself well you know there are there are lots and lots of dozens of different colour manufacturers and there are hundreds of, of colours in every brand how do you know which colours I have in my box well that is because after many many years of teaching art classes I can tell you that in beginner sets even across the manufacturers they almost always put the same colours in or the same variation of these colours and so the chances are that you're going to have at least one of these colours in your box possibly all of them so in a minute we're going to point the camera down I'm going to talk you through the three colors that I think you know they can really trip you up as a beginner and then after that I'm going to mention one further color which although not bad in itself can also cause you a few difficulties when you start out painting so let's point the camera downwards and I'm going to explain to you what these colors are and why I think that you should perhaps wait until you're a little bit more experienced at painting before you add them to your palette now the first colour we're going to look at today is black. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, black is not a colour, it is in fact a surface that doesn't reflect any light and that's the problem with it. It can be, uh, it can be rather harsh in a painting and there are very very few instances of black in real life. Things that you might think of as black, perhaps you've got a black cat, I've got a black cat, actually when you look at him he's got a lot of brown in his fur. So often you can look more closely at things you assume are black and once you get more used to looking at colours you're going to find that they're actually not pure black at all. So I'm going to paint some black onto the paper here so we can have a look at it. So here's our black paint. One of the other problems that beginners can have with black is that um, they can use it to darken colours with. It's a very bad use of it and um, it's rather a muddy dirty colour um, it can even appear, um, in, certainly in watercolour mixes, it can appear rather brownish compared to some other darks. So you shouldn't be using it to, um, to darken things with and if you're a beginner I suggest you avoid it completely for a little while. Now an alternative to using black is a colour called Payne's Grey. So if you look in your beginner's set I almost guarantee that you'll have either black or Payne's Grey. If you've got a slightly larger set you may actually have both. So I'm going to put some Payne's Grey down so you can compare the two. Now Payne's Grey is a dark sort of blue leaning grey. So here we have Payne's Grey. Now I think you can see that it's just a much um, a much fresher, much brighter colour. It's not as brown as the black is, it's more blue. You can actually get it as dark as you want it. So let me just clean my brush and I'm going to go in with some really, really sort of straight out of the pan, some really dark Payne's Grey with hardly any water in. So there you are, you see you can get it just as dark as black but it actually looks much fresher. So the first colour for you to avoid using when you're a beginner is black and I suggest that you use Payne's Grey instead. Now if you've got a set with the, I tend to use tube paints and I squeeze them into um, a palette like this and let them dry but if you've got those little paints that come in small blocks you'll find that they actually lift out whatever set you've got as long as you've got a reasonable um, students or artist grade of paints you'll find those little blocks lift out. So what you can do, if you've got black, I suggest you pull that colour out and pop some Payne's Grey in. Don't throw it away because as you become more experienced, you'll get better at using all of the colours 
and then you'll be able to use black on occasion. But I suggest that to start with, you take that color out. If you've got small square blocks, tiny square pans, you'll find that those are the small size, and then you get a larger size. Those small sizes are called half pans, and then you get a larger size if you've got the blocks that are slightly bigger and more oblong in shape, then those are called full pans. You can go into any art shop and buy them singly, or you can buy them on the internet singly, and you can lift out your black, pop your paints grey in, and your paintings will just be a little bit fresher. So moving on from black, the next colour we're going to look at, and you guessed it, yes, it's white. Now, not only is white not a colour, white is not a watercolour. So um, it's extremely irritating to me as somebody who's always trying to, um, you know, having lots of beginners in my class, trying to teach beginners, it's very annoying to me that they put white in watercolour sets because it really does confuse people and um, white is opaque. Now, if you try to imagine transparent white, it's quite hard to do, isn't it? The truth is that proper white is not transparent. It can't be transparent. It can only be opaque. So therefore, if you add it to any watercolour, it will make it opaque. Now, I'm not saying never use white in your life. And there are occasions when I use white paint in watercolour painting. But what I'm saying to you is just like black, Avoid it to start with because you're learning to use a transparent medium and it really is best for you if you learn to use it transparently before then adding other things which are technically mixed media. So if I look at a particular colour, now I've got two options for making it lighter with watercolour. So I can, um, I can add white as we said which would then take it into mixed media or I can just add more water. So let's look at it both ways. So if I add more water. I can really get that colour as pale as I want. And it goes down to quite a nice, uh, quite a nice pink. I've got a feeling this is the Windsor and News Newton uh, Madder, or it may actually be alizarin crimson. Yes, I think it is alizarin crimson. Um, alizarin crimson, another colour that's often in beginner sets, can be rather mucky and brownish. But this is the Windsor and Newton one, and it's not bad at all. So there we are, there's my um, my alizarin crimson and then I've watered it right down to get this pale shade. But if I were a beginner and I didn't know any better, I might use white. So what I'm going to do now is get some white paint. And I don't even like having white paint on my brush because it's going to get in my palette and mess everything up. So here we are and um, we'll get some white in with this, this colour here. Now... I don't know if you can see the difference, but look how much flatter and more opaque that is. And as it dries, because it's gouache, gouache was actually designed for um, for graphic artists making uh, making advertisements. So gouache is designed to dry flat and even. It's quite a beautiful medium in its own right. But you can see that if you're looking for transparent watercolour and you're looking to get that lovely glow of the paper, using white is not going to be your best way of lightening colours. You can just, as I said, add more water to them. The third colour we're going to look at is Viridian. So um, I don't keep it in my permanent palette because it's a very difficult colour to use. So I've put some in here. This, I think, is actually the um, St. Petersburg White Knights Viridian. They don't call it Viridian. They call it something like Emerald. If you've got a brand which are not sort of, um, perhaps not a, a known brand, you may find they call this colour Emerald. But you'll soon recognise it because it's incredibly bright. Another colour which can be similar to this is phthalo green. So what we've got here is a really bright and unnatural looking blue based green. It's a transparent colour. It's very strong. Now you can get away with using this if you completely dull it down with something like yellow ochre. So it's not impossible to use but um, it really is overused and again it's a colour I have no idea why they put this colour in beginner's sets because you can see when I'm painting it here it's got a certain beauty in its own right and I'm just adding more water to it so you can see how it looks watered down. It's got a certain uh, certain brightness and beauty to it but it's nothing like any uh, any foliage or trees that you might see and since landscapes are one of the things that we might paint most often it may not be a very useful colour for you. In fact, any ready-made greens are going to cause you problems as a beginner 
And the reason for that is if you're sitting outside painting and you've got two ready-made greens in your box, and you're looking at this sort of landscape in front of you and you're thinking to yourself, well, which one of these two greens do I use? Well, that's just the, uh, the wrong way to start, to be honest. You want to be looking at the yellows and the blues in your sets and mixing them together, perhaps making a little colour chart. So you have probably, if you've got even the smallest beginner set, you'll probably have at least two blues and probably at least two yellows. You can mix those together with different amounts of blue, different amounts of yellow, different amounts of water, and you'll get quite a wide range of colours. But this Viridian colour on its own is just not very useful to you. I will show you what happens if we add a really warm, um, dull green to uh, dull, sorry, dull yellow to it, which is yellow ochre. So we'll add a little bit of yellow ochre to it, and already it's looking a lot more natural. So I'm not saying it can't be used, or that it's not adjustable, but if you find that your landscapes are constantly looking really bright and unnatural, then it can be because of Viridian. So it's a really strong colour, it's something that's quite unnatural for any greens you might see in nature, something to be careful to avoid. Even if you're maybe a fantasy artist and your, your paintings are full of uh, dragons and fantasy landscapes, I've still seen this colour completely overused and it's just a bit strong and sickly. So Viridian Green is another one that if you're a beginner, I suggest that you take that out of your box and replace it with either a more natural green or perhaps even just another yellow or another blue that will enable you to mix a wider range of greens from your own primary colours. Now we've talked about three colours which you should probably avoid even having in your box at least while you're a beginner and just put them aside until you become a more experienced painter. But one colour which people can get into a bit of trouble with, which is still a very nice colour which you should keep in your box, is ultramarine. So let me put some on the paper for you. So here's my ultramarine and it's a really uh, a really sort of purple leaning blue. It's a very heavily granular colour. Now it's a beautiful colour and it's very good for mixing purples with and it's very good on its own. But where I see beginners getting into trouble with it are a couple of areas. One is using it for sky. So if I water it down a little bit, it's very granular and it's not really sky colour, is it? Um, I'd be amazed if you don't have ultramarine in your beginner's set. If you don't have it, you'll probably have cobalt, which is very, very close to ultramarine, but a bit less purple. Well, both of those colours can be really tricky to use in skies. As I said, they're not very sky-like, particularly not if you live in, um, in Europe or in England like I do, possibly even America. You may find that if you live somewhere more tropical, then um, this may be uh, a bit more useful for you, but generally speaking, it's not a great colour for skies and it granulates really heavily. So it can just make your skies look very dirty and very much the wrong colour. So instead of that, I suggest that you look for some of these lighter blues. You probably have cerulean in your box. So here is cerulean blue. Um, you can see it's much more sky coloured straight away. It may need a bit of adjusting. It can be a little cold. You might need a drop of pink in it. But Generally speaking, it's a much better sky colour. I mean, be informed by what you're looking at. There may be greys in your skies. Your skies may be brighter. You could even add a little bit of, um, of phthalo blue to this colour. And I have done a whole video on uh, different mixes of cerulean blue. So I'll put, that, uh, I'll put that in the information card above. So you can see it's much more useful for skies and there are lots of other colours that you can mix with it. Now, the other way that people get into trouble with ultramarine is with mixing greens. Now, ultramarine tends towards purple, which means it's got a touch of red in it. Now, green is made from yellow and blue. If you introduce red, you're introducing the, uh, the third primary. So let me show you how that works. So let's go back to the, uh, the crazy bright viridian that we used earlier. And let's put some on the paper here. And let's see what happens when we add a bit of red to that. So um, again, I'll use the colour I was using earlier, which is the alizarin. And we're going to put some of that in there. Now, I don't know if you can see, but straight away it's dulling that colour down. There we go, until it almost turns into some form of greenish grey. What this means, practically speaking, is that because ultramarine already has a tiny bit of red in it, when you're mixing it with yellow, you're actually including that third, that third primary colour. 
Now red and green are colour opposites as well, which is why the red is so effective in dulling down the green. What this means from the point of using ultramarine is that if you mix greens from it, you're going to get rather dull greens. Now there's nothing wrong with them at all. You can mix some lovely greens from ultramarine, but if you only use ultramarine, you're going to find that you rarely get sort of very bright colours. So let's put some, uh, some warm cadmium deep in that. And there we go, there's the green that you're getting with the ultramarine. It's a really beautiful colour actually, but again it's got that little bit of uh, a little bit of pink, a little bit of red in the blue, and so you're getting a dull green. So yes, um, if you if you want to mix greens from ultramarine, that's great, and you will get beautiful natural greens. We need a lot of natural greens in landscapes. But if you want some really, really bright, fresh greens in there as well, you're gonna have to use other blues too to mix those fresh greens from. If you're using this blue to mix purple, then um, then you're on a home run because it's going to be fantastic for you. It mixes fantastic purples just by adding a little bit of pink to it. So those are the places that you can go wrong with ultramarine. Using it in skies, I avoid, advise beginners just to not use ultramarine in skies at all and probably not cobble either. You've got plenty of other colours you use from cerulean blue to manganese blue. Your thalo blues can be used, even Payne's grey. Lots of options, Prussian of course. So I would avoid ultramarine in skies and be aware that if you're mixing greens from ultramarine, they're going to be quite dull greens. So you might also want to contrast that with some brighter blues to make those fresher greens. So let me know in the comments if you found this video useful. I'm gonna have lots more color mixing videos coming up. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Please like and share this video so that I can help other people too. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.